Hi everyone, this is Robert Van Ostrand from Sheila David's Lab. Today I'm going to go over how to set up a midterm or final exam that includes both multiple choice and free response on Gradescope. Now let's get started. So you'll start at the dashboard of Gradescope and if you haven't already set up your course, you can see my Chem 2A test course, there's a, also a box there to create a new course. So once you're in, click Create Assignment and then for multiple choice and the way we're going to do it, click Online Assignment and then Next you'll see we can program our multiple choice. So go ahead and enter, enter in a good title and keep in mind, this is the title your students will see on their assignment list when they log in and look for the exam. So you'll want to strongly identify it as the part one multiple choice in some way, whatever you want to call it. And then simply just set up the times you want, um, when do you want the exam to appear and when do you want the exam to close. Now, if you set up a late time, you'll see in a second here, if you set up a late time, students will still be able to submit their documents until that time, but they will be marked as late. It's a convenient feature. So if you want to leave the students some extra time that they don't know about, you could just add that in there. And then you can follow up with them. If you say saw a late assignment after the original original submission time, you could just ask the student why that happened. Especially with distance learning, we've had lots of issues, technical issues with students. All right, once you're ready, click Create Assignment. And these are pretty straightforward. So, so in this kind of the title question I'm filling out there, and you see there's a point value you can change. And now you in the problem um, text area there, just go ahead and type in the actual question. Which element contains eight protons? So now you'll put in your options and then just use brackets there as you see I've done to signify the different options and simply don't put an X in the brackets for uh, the wrong answers and then for the correct answer, put in an X in the brackets. You can also just put A, B, C, D, or E instead of the names and I'll do that in the next question. So now when the students take this, they won't see the answer. They're just going to see all the, all the options, like for question one, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. They won't be able to see the answer, don't worry. The good thing about this is Gradescope grades it automatically. So it instantaneously wipes out a lot of the grading. If you have, say, you know, 10 to 20 multiple choice questions on your exam, the TAs like that. There you go and say the correct answer was C. You can just fill it out like that. And also if you wanna be more specific, you can just add a colon after them and type the actual text. And you'll see at the top right of that, of the box, you see there's a little thing that says insert images. So you could actually take a snapshot of the exam itself. If it has a lot of subscript, this might be necessary or superscript. You can take a screenshot or a little snapshot with the snipping tool and save it as an image and then just insert the question um, as an image from the exam. Okay, so once you're done with all your questions, hit save. And now say you did this with five to 10 problems, 15 problems, you would hit save at the end. And then just check that, you, that they're actually there. I hit save and then I went back to home. I'm going back into the course and there it is. So now that's all set up and ready for the students to take. So let's set up the free response. Go to create assignment, click exam quiz and name it just like we did before. Make sure you identify it as part two. Free response. Or you could go with like short and long answer. That's up to you. Just make sure the students can tell the difference. There. And so for this one, you need to have a template ready uh, for the free response. And how I do that is I go to the exam on the on a Word document and I space out the questions one per page. And then the, in the exam instructions, we tell the, tell the students to answer um, their responses on one page each. It kind of just makes it easy for them to coordinate everything. Now, once you have that template selected, go ahead and switch who will upload submissions to student. 
and then you'll set the same similar parameters to what you did earlier. Now, typically in GenChem 2A, we've been giving students an additional 20 minutes to submit their assignment beyond the end of the lecture time. And that gives them a little time to scan and upload their, their exams. So also switch the submission type to variable length because um, if, if you do it the other way around, it'll force the students to have the exact same length of, of exam, which they have str struggles with. And then you saw me click um, template visibil visibility at the end, and that just allows students to be able to uh, download the exam um, from Gradescope. Okay, so now we're at the outline. This is where you can name your questions, give them a general title, and assign the amount of points that they're due. So just say this one was worth 10 points. And now another consideration we could make is maybe put a number five in front of the words for this so it's less confusing to students you see how on gradescope since we started a new assignment this is now numbered one in the top right in the outline there but on the actual exam it might be number five it might be number 14. so just go ahead and type the question number on the title there and then the students will see that corresponding number like if i type six before this they would see that six and then explain in your own words so that's just one consideration to make and you see over in that little text box to the right, you can change the amount of points they're worth. Some, some points will be worth eight points, 12 points, whatever. I'm just choosing 10, this is arbitrary. Now, once you're done with all your questions, hit save outline. And then you can't really grade anything until you add an actual student submission. So I always end up, before the exam starts, um, I always end up uploading a dummy submission that's just blank. And that'll allow you to set up your rubric and I'm not aware of a way to set up your rubric without doing that. See, you can't really grade anything if you go to grade submissions right now. So what I do is go to manage submissions and the instructors can upload submissions for students. So I just made myself an, a, an account here. So I'm uploading myself a blank exam just to, normally uh, when a student uploads this, they're going to have their answers written down. So now I'm just assigning to problem one that question, and I'm assigning to problem two that question. You can verify the bottom left as Q1, Q2 at each, at each page. So if they have like six pages, they'll have to assign all their, their problems to, to pages. So hit submit once you're done. There, now I have an ungraded exam uploaded. Now you can go to grade submissions. Now you'll see that you can um, change the rubric. So under rubric settings, you can, what we've been doing is changing these to positive scoring. You can also do this under assignment settings. So if, so if you're running it, say with the attitude points are earned, not subtracted or not given, or yeah, yeah, you don't take away from a hundred, you, you earn points. So change it to positive scoring. And then you'll see on each rubric item, you can assign a certain amount of points to them and then those and then those rubric items will just accumulate a certain amount of points correct for each problem. And this is a good way to divvy out um, partial credit. So if they just say they use the right equation, you can give that two points. And then when a TA is grading this later, they can just come in and click that one, or they can actually just use a shortcut, a hot button and type one on their keyboard, which will also um, check that rubric item. Say you want to give them, I'm just making these up arbitrarily. You'll have your own way of divvying up the, of divvying up the partial credit. And then don't forget if you're doing positive scoring, you might want to have an option for, for zero points for incorrect or no work shown. So this part is up to you. And one good thing is, um, if you have something like sig figs, you can either award points for it through a rubric item, or you could change one of the rubric items to minus one if you want. And I'll show you how to do that in a second here. So you, and you can also type the actual number of the correct answer there. And the students aren't going to see that rubric until, um, until we release the exam to them. And you can even turn the rubric off if you want. So if you want to go the route, correct answer reported in sig figs and award points for that alone, you can. This part's totally up to you.
just say I was going to give them 10 points throughout all the other problems if I didn't want to award points, say, for sig figs. But we would take away one if they got the correct answer, but it reported the wrong sig figs. Correct answer, wrong sig figs. Yeah. There you go. That's another way to do it. And then, like I mentioned, don't forget to add a plus zero. Inevitably, you'll have some students that uh, that either just didn't write anything or they forgot to get to that part or they just didn't know the answer. So the TAs will be able to see all these rubric items. And this is actually really helpful, um, especially since we can't meet in one room and talk about and talk about the rubric so easily. It's really helpful to have good, good rubric set up. And the cool thing is using this way, you can set up the rubric ahead of time and then the, the TAs can just grade right after the exam is over. And with some exams now, um, after I've been putting in the multiple choice on Gradescope, grading the long answers takes maybe one to three hours, uh, usually around two hours. Okay, and I'm just putting mentions dot 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 for the different rubric items. You put what you want. And then always leave a space for plus zero and correct work. And you can edit the rubric at any time. And you see there's a place for comments on each problem. Sometimes leaving a comment can save a regrade request. And you'll just click next ungraded when you're ready to go to the, to the next ungraded question. So I just gave myself a plus zero. There, now 100% of the exams here are graded. Just imagine you have like 300 students. Once they're 100%, you'll see, you can, you can go to this review, review grades and look at all the different student scores. It tells you if they, they viewed them or not. And you can link it to Canvas and have it uploaded to Canvas. So once you're ready, you can hit publish grades and you'll see, you can even um, put up an email to the students. So once you hit publish, that's going to give them an indicator um, that they can go look at their exams. So now compose email. And this is helpful if you're just like wanting to give them the statistics in an email. You can do the same in your lecture and not send this if you don't want to. Okay, I'm just going to hit cancel. So now regrade requests, you see there's a little option on the left for regrade requests. You can enable them say a few days out from when students can start seeing their exam and they can have a few days to talk to their TAs about questions they might have and then we've typically been giving the students a week all right so one last quick note you see there's a menu option on the left called statistics go ahead and click that to see the student statistics on the exam or quiz or assignment all right and that'll do it I hope this was helpful just so you know, I've posted quite a few videos on how to use Gradescope, on how to use an app called PDF Creator, how to use the app Scannable on iOS to be able to even scan these free responses into a, a PDF. And uh, you'll also find a Chem, Ele Chem Elements video for students new to the Chem Elements system um, here at UC Davis. So good luck distance learning, everyone.